Hi there, today we're going to paint a lovely rose arrangement. We've had a good go at the garden rose and a, a wild rose hip rose. So we're gonna put it all together. Um, before we've done wreaths and we haven't really done a proper like arrangement of flowers. So this is our first go today. So get your paint and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to do a little arrangement with using uh, the wild rose hip that we've painted before and the slightly more formal garden rose. So they are going to be our references and we'll be popping a little bit of foliage and things in there first. Now it's going to be a nice loose painting, but I always think it's kind of nice to just give yourself a bit of a bit of a helping hand with a pencil. So um, when you are doing these sort of arrangements, you've got your flowers in the middle and things, but then I always like to think in terms of curves. So there's a bit of a sort of S curve going through the piece and then I just want to know that I've got a few sort of curves. This all makes sense as I start to paint. I think the best thing is, is I just need to get started. Um, my nails are quite an interesting look today. I am very new to the whole world of like painting your nails and stuff and I thought it would be kind of fun for YouTube if you're going to see my hands an awful lot um, but I have very few skills when it comes to it so this is a sort of abstract look I suppose um, so let's get started with a rose or two so I've got myself some, some rather sort of dilute mixed up alizar and crimson we've got some permanent rose which is just in with some of my cobalt violet as well. So we're gonna do a nice sort of pinky, dusky pink set of roses. And then we have also got the lovely sort of amber ochre color that we can just blend down and get a sort of warmer dusky pink peachy rose. Okay, so we're just gonna have some fun and just have a go. So if you haven't yet, had a chance to paint a rose using my tutorials then you can link to the episode just in the top corner there and it'll give you everything you need to have a go at this but I just thought it would be really nice to actually put something into a bit more of a of a, like a nice arrangement really because we learn the flowers and that's all great but then wouldn't it be lovely to sort of paint something nice so we've got one of our nice garden roses here and that's looking really lovely and next I'm going to pop in a rose hip so I've got my yellow and I'm going to just do a little circle of dots here. Now the rose hip is in my Simple Summer Watercolour Wildflowers episode. It's the last one we paint so you can go and visit it there. I'm using the size 4 brush to do all of this. The sort of size 8 felt a tiny bit big and also size 6 was just a bit much so this brush is big, but we have bigger because I just want a little bit of control going on. So the yellow is blending in to our rose hip petals. And we're gonna squeeze in that last one just there. And we're just blending in with our rose here. So that's looking really nice. Now I'm gonna paint another rose down here. So I like to work on a basis of thirds and threes and triangular notions when it comes to composing a painting together. So a cluster of three big roses is a really nice starting point and I always recommend putting in your focal flowers first and we're not worrying about them all blending into each other. That's kind of good, really. We don't mind that at all. Lovely, so I've got three nice open flowers here. 
My angles are going to be largely for foliage, but they're also going to help me put in a few smaller flowers that are going to be sort of faced out on an angle. So I'm going to now use this little stem here uh, to help me create a rose hip flower from the side. So let's see how we go about that. Picking up colour on my brush and you'll see instead of a circle of yellow I've done a sort of squashed oval and I will then do some petals that are also taking into account this sideways angle I use plenty of water in this uh, little exercise so just don't be scared of using all the water and uh, not so much colour because it's a lovely light and delicate piece. And then the other thing I'd like to include is a few little rosebuds as well. So I'm going to have a sort of double spurt of rosebuds coming off here. And I'm just going to do two little mirrored shapes. And although we're not quite on stems yet, I am just going to just drop in just the tiniest bit of green. And then, lovely. Now I think we're going to have maybe a little, we'll have a rosebud there. And we'll have it in the more dusky color. That one's slightly larger, maybe slightly opening up a bit more. And we're going to have one more rose that's kind of starting to open up down here and we'll do it in our dusky colour. You need to put the tiny bit of that green in the base there. Lovely. A little bit more. Cool. Okay. So for a rose, an open faced rose sort of on its side, in the same way that I used a sort of slightly squashed shape there, I'm going to start my rose, yeah, just with that slightly more oval approach rather than a round circular approach. Now this is a really, really lovely loose approach to painting roses. I think it works really nicely, um, but the loose approach to painting always benefits from being confident with the brush and sort of well versed in how to get the best out of it. So all I would say is if this looks a little bit daunting, just take it slow and go back and have a little look at some of the earlier tutorials where we do a garden rose, where we do a rose hip and just get yourself a bit more comfortable with the notion of doing painting like this. Okay, so we are going to now move on to the foliage. I'm going to, I've, I've cleaned up some of my palettes for you. Again, it's annoying. I can't ever quite fit the entire palette into the shot because it's so big, but we'll just mix up some color down here. So I've got my sap green and then I'm going to mix in it's a little bit of cobalt, no, French ultramarine, beg your pardon, which gives us a really nice, dark, interesting color. Now we're going to be using quite a lot of this, so I'm going to just mix up quite a lot. I thought it might be really fun to add in a bit of eucalyptus as well as just the uh, rose leaves so I'm going to paint a few of those too. We've got a eucalyptus uh, tutorial, we've got a few actually um, lurking about. There is a eucalyptus in the all the leaves you could ever want to paint tutorial and there is also uh, a willow eucalyptus leaf project which I highly recommend you have a look at. Okay so I'm going to start off, uh, let's start off down here I think. So we're going to start by painting a sort of 
a largish but very translucent little set of sort of sand dollar eucalyptus leaves because we're going to go over these with a sort of layered approach coming soon. So we're starting to sort of create the, the curves and the outer edges of our piece. I've always quite enjoyed allowing colours to bleed and blend into each other so don't worry if that kind of starts to happen for you. And we'll get a little bit more up here. Really using plenty of water, not very much colour at all, because we are going to be sort of overlapping and doing some nice, slightly more concentrated colours over the top of these eucalyptus uh, sprigs. And then we'll just have, we'll have a little one there. We can't forget about our actual rose leaves. And the idea is when you paint in a really translucent manner that the colour that is lurking in those watery shapes will just flood to the outer edges and create beautiful thin papery edges. Lovely. Okay. So I do want to wait for this to dry before we start popping in any actual rose leaves. So we'll just let this dry and then we'll come back to it. That's lovely and dry. So we can now start to add in more leaves. Now I need a little bit more of a concentrated color to do my rose leaves so we'll just mix up a little bit more it's amazing how much you always seem to need so as we started off with our lovely eucalyptus that's dried really beautifully I love it when you get a bit of a blend like that and now I'm going to go in with a slightly more concentrated um, use of the rose leaf so this is just using the size 4 brush yet again Dropping in a little bit of darkness there, and ooh, I've got a little hair on my brush. And then just adding in the slightly serrated leaf. Now it's interesting, sometimes you paint on what you think is really nice wet brush stroke, and then it dries immediately. Still trying to get to the bottom of some of these mysteries with watercolour. Um, but yeah, so we'll just help that one along a little bit, and then. Two mirrored S and C curves, just getting a little bit of a serration and a little bit more darkness at the bottom there. Now I'm going to start placing some leaves over the top of the eucalyptus. I'm still thinking about my curves and making sure things are sort of unfurling out from these flowers in the centre. Um, okay, so let's I have one coming out here. I always enjoy how the, the rose leaves always end up some slightly quirky shapes um, when I'm squishing my brush down, but I, 
I think that's quite quite nice. It's kind of part of it to have these rather wild, unwieldy leaves. It's nice to keep going with a, with a flower that we've all just learnt, so continuing on with being creative with more rose projects it's kind of nice because you just learn a new leaf and you're like oh just oh learn a new a new floral project or something and then suddenly you're on to the next thing it's like oh i would have quite liked to have actually spent some time and played around with that so i, I get it so it's kind of nice to be able to keep going with it isn't it right a few more leaves and a bit more paint mix because we just get through that paint Now I'm going to pop in another one just here and we've also got to remember we've got our rose hip berries and we're also going to do a few little extra sprigs of something so it's just a case of not sort of going all out too quickly. So I'm starting with some stems, squishing down that brush. And sometimes it doesn't need to be a full on two mirrored C curves, it can just be the, a little one like this. And then sometimes it's just a case of having it sort of poking out the edge like that. It's always good to just keep looking at the piece as a whole and making sure that it's still making sense for you. Okay, this is looking lovely. I'm gonna have a few more little leaves there and we'll let these dry and then we'll see what else we can add in. So the leaves are gonna come from there. So I like to sort of try and keep things connected. And what's lovely is this build up of this darker colour is just starting to add a bit more depth, a bit more interest to the piece. And the roses are really starting to sort of stand out and come into their own. Okay, so we'll let that dry and we'll go on to the next bit. Okay, so we've regrouped and it's time to keep going. So we're now going to be working on the extra little bits like the berries on the rose hip and just the joining up the buds and the sprigs so I'm working now with a, another sort of level of deep colour and I'm just going to find little places to pop in the little berries so I'm starting off with placing in the little branches and I've just, all I've done is I've just popped a little bit more of the navy blue, the, um, the French ultramarine into that green mix and then we'll just have one there. And what I'm able to do here is just kind of make the shape of this piece work and make sure it's nicely nicely balanced okay and now i'm going to go for some completely pure crimson alizarin still with the size 4 brush and i'm just going to create little berry shapes i've got a tiny bit of fluff on my brush 
which just seems to be the rule these days. So I'm creating these berries by just using the belly of the brush with two little mirrored C curves. And because I'm able to use a nice sort of concentrated strong colour and because I used a very translucent colour on the roses in the first place, it works really nicely without me really having to struggle to get these berries in there. And I think we'll just have a few more poking out. Don't always need to be on a stem if we can't always see that. Lovely. And then with a slightly smaller brush, we've got a 3 tenths brush here. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of Mars Black. It might just be out of shot or you might just be able to see it. And drop in two little bunny ears just at the tops. We've built up this sort of layer of colour to the point where we're using black on a piece. You really can sense the, the progression. But it doesn't mean we can't go back in and look at some of the lighter colours as well. Okay, so I'm now going to join up those buds, but we're not actually going to see a huge amount of them. But what we do need is we need some sepals. I always find I run out of room when I start picking up more and more brushes. Lovely, and then we've got one down here. We can't see much more of that one. And now I just want to sort of go in and fill in a few of the gaps with a few little bits of eucalyptus that we might not have seen. And the great thing about this is because it's a lovely translucent color, it can sort of sit in there and not get too in the way. So what's happened is from starting with three main roses is we've started to flesh out and build up and we're starting to get a really lovely uh, composition piece with a few little bits poking out here and there. And you could always just keep going, keeping on sort of adding little extra bits if you felt the need. And the only thing left to do is I want to just add a little bit more detail to my main focal flowers. So for the rose hip, that means coming in with a little bit more of the yellow first and then just dabbing in a little bit more green. And that will just blend in together. And then for the actual roses, Let's get a little bit more alizarin and crimson. And you don't have to do this, but sometimes it can be nice just to go in and give them just a little bit more in the middle. Not too much though, because we do love the, the loose approach, but it can sometimes just help define those inner petals.
And there you have it. A, ro a rose and wild rose composition. So I hope you enjoyed that. I love putting flowers together in compositions and doing some roses like that is a lovely intro. But of course, we've got tons of flowers in all of my other videos that you could put together. So if you've liked the video, of course, hit give me a like and uh, comment below to let me know how you got on with that and maybe what you'd like to see me do in future. And of course, a subscribe will mean that you'll never miss another video. All right, I'll see you again. Bye.